Hey everybody, today on The Witch Hunt, we'll be talking to Bram Stoker award-winning author, Sarah Tantlinger. Stick around. Happy New Year, everybody. Sorry it's been a hot minute since my last video, but the holidays take up a lot of my time. But here we are, we're back. Happy New Year. Uh, I'm outside. It's a beautiful day in Miami. It's about 68 degrees, which is cool for us. I live near a small airport, so you might hear some engines or propellers uh, whizzing past. So I have my AirPods in because my microphone broke. Uh, so hopefully this will work out great. So today's guest is the author of the Bram Stoker award-winning The Devil's Dreamland, poetry inspired by H.H. H. Holmes, and the Stoker-nominated novella To Be Devoured. Her other works include Love for Slaughter, The Devil's City, written with Matt Corley, airplane, Cradle and of Parasites, and she edited the anthology Not All Monsters. So here to show you a rare and fascinating collection is Sarah Tantling. Hello. My name is Sarah Tanlinger. I want to thank Gabby so much for having me on Author Show and Tell. So before I get to what I'm going to show you today, I thought I would just tell you a little bit about my work. So I am the Bram Stoker Award winning author of The Devil's Dreamland. This is poetry inspired by H.H. H. Holmes, the serial killer. I also have a Stoker nominated novella, To Be Devoured, and a poetry collection called Love for Slaughter. And my latest releases from 2020 include a co-written novella with Matt Corley called The Devil City, um, another poetry collection called Cradle Land of Parasites, which chronicles the Black Death, and I edited an anthology called Not All Monsters with this killer cover by Don Noble. And this is an anthology of women in horror with 21 new short stories by probably some familiar names to you if you are an avid reader of horror. Um, so those are the books. If you're interested, they're all on Amazon, online. You can find them pretty easily. And now to jump into what I'm going to show you today, which might be something that's a little unusual, but maybe not. Um, but I've been collecting shark teeth fossils since I was a very small child. We have family down around the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland, which is most of where my fossils have come from. Um, so maybe some of you collect some things like this too. Maybe you've never heard of collecting this before. Either way, I'll show you some of the fossils that I've collected over the years. And since they're pretty small, I'm going to switch over to a different camera and just zoom in on them where I have them because if I just try to hold them up like this you're probably not going to see them very well so let me go get my collection okay so here are the fossils um, right now they're just kind of unceremoniously dumped into this pink box <laughs> I think this box is from when I was a bridesmaid whatever time or whatever um, so hey if you make custom shark teeth boxes hit me up but I have been collecting these for, like I said, since I was really young. This box is pretty big and flat, so they're spread out. They look more impressive when they're all like in a huge clumped up pile. Um, but I'm going to go through some of these and tell you about what I think some of the fossils are from, the different types of sharks and things like that. Okay, so I pulled out a couple of shark's teeth to show you. So the teeth take at least 10,000 years to fossilize, though some of these are probably way, way older, possibly millions of years old. Um, these are some of the bigger ones I found. I'll just compare that to some of these itty itty bitty ones. I am not an expert. I can just tell you what I think some of them are based on some identification charts. For example, these are most likely from stingrays. You can see they're a lot different than the shark teeth, obviously, that's from stingray. Um, these, I think, might actually be, I'm sorry, my table's like dusty from all the teeth now. Um, 
So I think these are fossilized crab claws. I'm not completely sure about that, but try to zoom in on that. But you can see they're hollow. Um, and you'll see there's different colors too. A lot of that is just from the different like minerals and sediment as they fossilize. It could also be from how old they are. A lot of the sharks here are probably maybe snaggletooth sharks, which you can see from some of the serration on these. Um, also probably tiger sharks. I think some of the smaller ones are from maybe angel sharks or even lemon sharks. Again, I'm not an expert. I can just tell you based off some identification charts that I've looked at to help identify the fossils, but honestly, some of them look so much alike that it's really hard to tell exactly where something comes from. Um, so these, again, are the bigger ones. Zoom out so you can see the different sizes. And of course, there's all the other ones in here, but didn't want to pull all of them out. So these are probably my three biggest ones. It's kind of like a competitive sport with my family. <laughs> Whoever finds the biggest shark tooth whenever we go down to the bay. My sister and I are really good at finding these tiny, tiny, tiny ones. Um, I mean, that's like it compared to my pinky nail. They're so small. And of course, if you're really good, or luck, actually more than anything luck, you can find the mega tooth, the ever elusive mega tooth, but it has been found. If you're not familiar with that, it's just kind of fun to Google and see how huge they are. They're like probably bigger than my hand, the mega tooth some people find. I'm always really jealous when people find it because I've never found one that big. Yeah, so it's kind of a strange thing to collect. I don't really know what to do with them. Maybe someday when I have more room, I could decorate with them. Maybe put them in some glass jars or something. Okay. And just to give you a little more of an idea, here's a chart that I like that I think helps identifying white sharks, great white sharks, and just some other different things that people commonly find in North America, at least. I know I have some of these sand tiger shark ones, but I could not find them in my box. They're really distinct because they have these little markings here. So I have them, but I just could not find them in my box. Um, yeah. And these vertebrae, either my sister or her husband has found them before at the beach. They're really neat looking. They're just kind of this disc with the hollows in them. And then I know I have at least one of these two somewhere, but I could not find it in that stupid box. But these are most likely from cow sharks. While I'm at it, I thought I would show you my sea glass collection as well. It is also quite a mountain of mostly you can see the green, the amber, and the clear. Um, these are definitely the most common colors for sea glass. A lot of the amber in the green comes from beer bottles or soda bottles and there are some different shades of them in here you can see this one's a little more yellow dark amber the light amber some of it's not quite completely sea glass yet sometimes i got a little too excited and would take a piece home with me that wasn't quite done so it's a little rougher rather than smooth um, you might be able to see this one's actually more of a minty green color. That piece is a little more rare. And then the rarest pieces I have are probably these two blue ones. Um, this one is probably could have used a little more time in the ocean, but I took it home. And then this one beside it, however, is definitely a lot smoother. And this one is hard to see, but it's actually kind of like a red. You might be able to see it a little better. Um, that's probably the only reddish piece I've ever found. So that's definitely a rarer one too. And then I have some really dark greens here. And then some, try to see that. It's really neat when you can still see some of the 
writing that was on the bottle, the different textures. This one does have some lettering on it, but I don't think that's going to focus very well. And then this one you can definitely tell was the top of the bottle. You can see the ridges. And then this piece was probably more so on the bottom. But yeah, a lot of these came from the same place too. So hopefully someday I'll get to go to some different beaches where sea glass is found and maybe find some different colors. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and checking out my collection. I hope it was interesting to some of you. Um, obviously, I miss the beach and the water, so that's something that I hope to do whenever it's safe again in the world to travel. Um, until then, I am working on an ocean horror novella, so I am going to enjoy living in that world for a little bit, I think. And that's about it. So everybody, please take care. Thank you again to Gabby so much for having me. Make sure you check out all of her videos. She is a really awesome human being, okay? All right, take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Sarah. I love, love that sea glass collection. I was thinking you could maybe do something with that. You could maybe make one of those framed mirrors or one of those glass top coffee tables where you do like a mosaic and then you cover it with a sheet of glass. Um, with those teeth, I can see you making some sort of cool necklace for your next conference or even just bottling them up in mason jars and displaying around your house. I, it's just a fascinating collection and um, it should be out in the open where we can all see it. So I really love it. Thank you for showing us your collection and I look forward to that ocean horror novella that you've got cooking up. Can't wait to see that. So thanks for joining us today on Author Show and Tell. Don't forget to like and comment and hit that little bell button to subscribe. As always, thank you for joining us on the witch hunt and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.